Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Death Mode Rogue playthrough episode. We are playing as Raiden the Rogue, and last episode we defeated the Hive Mind, and now we've got a Blood Moon going, so I decided to start filming. I've been building some arenas in between episodes because I definitely want to have a good arena to fight the Skeletron boss in, as well as we've got some bosses like the Queen Bee that would be good to kill soon. So, right now I'm just trying to survive the Blood Moon. There are so many enemies in death mode. They've really bumped the spawn rate. Yeah, it's like 400% or something increase in spawn rate. But we've got tons of really good weapons, like this Rot Ball is really good. And a lot of people mentioned in the comments that the reason I was getting extra Rot Balls is it only requires 999 of a consumable throwing item to have an infinite amount using the Louis AFK mod. And so I've got an infinite amount of rot balls and knowing that I made an infinite amount of feather knives. So we have a thousand feather knives and these are really powerful as well. Man, we're gonna be so well prepared to fight the next bosses. We've just got so many good items. I built a simple arena near the dungeon and I also built a simple arena over at the top of the jungle biome, just at one platform. And so what we can do is find a bee and then hopefully pull the bee into the surface and then fight the bee at the surface and we'll have more room to maneuver and everything. Now that we made it through the blood moon, let's go ahead and craft a few more things. I know there's a lot of stuff we can craft with spiky balls now. In fact, we should probably buy a whole bunch of those from this guy. Yeah, that's probably enough, 1,300. One thing people had mentioned is that we can craft Sky Stabbers, and this is a rogue weapon that is an upgrade to the spiky ball. It just needs cloud and aerolite. So it looks like this is a stackable item and we can have four of them. So let's go ahead and craft three more. And there we go, we have four and that's the max stack. And it basically allows us to throw these down in the arena. Well, the reason I'm crafting these is because I think it'll be a really nice thing to use in order to fight the Desert Scourge. We can throw a few of them in the arena and it should defeat the Desert Scourge pretty quickly, especially if we throw some Rot Balls and some Feather Knives at them too. That allows us to, with Armageddon, go ahead and farm up the Desert Scourge pretty quickly. I want to get some money because we're pretty much out of gold. And then I also want to do that because having Stress Pills would be very helpful for fighting Skeletron as well as the Queen Bee. So now let's go fight the Desert Scourge. We just gotta be really careful. I'm gonna throw these these little orbs down and see if they work pretty well, the sky stabbers or whatever. And looks like we almost got the desert scourge. Yeah, pretty easy. And I'll just keep doing this and we'll go through those five medallions. Now that we've defeated the boss a few times, let's go ahead and open up some treasure bags and then hopefully we'll get a stress pill or ladonum. So one thing I did is I temporarily turned on the auto trash to be an auto sell at 100%. And so I can quickly auto trash all the stuff. And basically, oh my gosh, we got Dune Hopper. <laughs> Excellent. This is so much faster because it automatically sells everything. And I only basically see the new items like the Heart of Darkness or the Dune Hopper. Yeah, this is so much easier. Whoa, we got two dune hoppers in 30 bags. And we have three hearts of darkness. That's a pretty cool item, but I'm really looking for those stress pills and ladonum. So hopefully we can get those. I may do a few more boss clears and just see if we can find them. But first I gotta see what the dune hopper does. It's pretty sweet, it like bounces. Let's do another fight here and get some more treasure. Ooh, this is getting close. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> These fights are actually surprisingly fun because they're fast, but they're also very high stakes because any hit will instantly kill you. So let's see what we got here. Oh, we got two Ladonums. Yes. 
That's awesome. Although it looks like they've reworked it. It doesn't do the same effects that it used to. Interesting. So I'm in the jungle now and it's time to find a hive so we can defeat the queen bee. My plan is to use a jungle teleporter and get ourselves to the surface so we can fight the bee up there. But we still haven't found a queen bee hive yet. Oh, <laughs> I said that right as we find one. Excellent. Well, we are good to go. We've got rage active. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch off the heart of darkness with the arrow stone. And let's go ahead and start up this fight. And then let's teleport to the surface and wait for the queen bee to come to us. Hopefully it doesn't despawn. There we go. This is gonna be fun. And we got a new boss song. I'm gonna turn off the map there. Let's put down some of these sky stabbers. Man, this is such a fun fight. Man, we're doing pretty good damage already. We've almost got adrenaline up. If we can get adrenaline, we could use rage and adrenaline at the same time. Oh no! I still had Armageddon on. Don't do that, everybody. <laughs> if you're gonna do boss fights, turn off Armageddon before you start them. Oh, that's so painful. That fight was going so perfectly. I had just used Rage and Adrenaline. Oh well, we've got some honey blocks and stuff. We can go craft some summons. Well, we are back in the jungle and let's go ahead and start this up. And hopefully we can do similar <laughs> to what we were doing last time because that was such a good start to the fight. I think I might try to save up the Rage for when we have Adrenaline. But I don't know if I'm going to get Adrenaline again. I'm kind of flustered. But we should be fine. We've got so much extra damage. Plus, these little Sky Stabbers are amazing. All that damage when it charges us. I might just wait to use Rage towards the end of the fight, like below 25% health. Yeah, we're going to have no problem doing this. Let's go ahead and just use Rage right now. Man, it's getting a little laggy in here. Almost got her. There we go. Excellent. That feels good. So now that we've got the Queen Bee defeated, we can craft the Hardened Honeycomb, but I don't think that's actually going to be that useful. I may skip it. We've got some pretty good weapons already. So it just turned to night, and we are over at the dungeon, and we've got our little above the dungeon pool here. <laughs> And we've got the old man down here. So I think it's time we start up the fight. Here's our arena. I like just having three levels with a few campfires. But this should be a pretty fun fight. I really enjoy fighting Skeletron. Let's put down our Sky Stabbers. And then just start firing off these daggers. They're so good. And we can try the Turbulance as well. That one's also very powerful. We want to take down these hands as quickly as we can. And then whenever these Sky Stabbers get used up, we got to replace them because they do so much good damage in an arena like this where we're constantly running back and forth. We get to have those do damage over and over. And we've already got a hand down. Man, I feel like we gained so much power after defeating the hive mind and unlocking Aerolite. Okay, let's throw the more stabbers down. Man, we've almost got rage and adrenaline up. We gotta, we gotta do it. 
Oh no, we missed our adrenaline just by a little bit. Oh well. I'll go ahead and just use Rage right now. Okay, we gotta play it a little bit safer. Just throw a few of those. I love the new mechanics they have in death mode for Skeletron, where he teleports and he's got extra attacks and those lasers he shoots out. It's really fun. And we've almost got adrenaline. Just gotta be careful. There we go, let's use it. Man, we did a lot of damage there. Okay, almost got him. There we go. Pretty simple clear there. Man, I feel at this point in the game, with the combination of the Feather Knife and the Sky Stabbers, rogues are extremely powerful. That was such a fun fight, and from it we got the typical Skeleton Hand and the Bone Glove, and we have the Skeletron Lore, which shows that we get increased damage while in the dungeon, but our max health is decreased. Okay, well, I think it's time to head down into the dungeon. This will be pretty good. We've got lots of stuff to collect in the dungeon. I think I'll put on our Luxor's Gift again, and that way we can light up the rooms a little bit easier. And I put on a Danger Sense Potion. That helps a lot in the dungeon. Ooh, we have an Alchemy Table. That'll be helpful. We can put that in our crafting station. So here we got the mechanic. Um, I don't think we really need much. Actually, I think wire. I think I need like 50 wire or something because I think that can craft a DPS meter. The other things we need from here, we've got a Shinobi blade, I think, that we can get. That's a throwing weapon. I definitely want to try that out. And then we can also get some bones, of course, and do some crafting recipes with those. The shadow key is really important, and cobalt shields are also really good. So those are the things I'm going to be looking for. It's kind of nice to be in the old style dungeon where the ground doesn't fall out from under you. They added like that change in the 1.4 update and it was kind of cool, but I don't know. I like old dungeons too. We got Valor there. Man, I'm feeling so powerful. <laughs> These guys are just getting destroyed in here. One thing I just remembered is that with these spikes we can actually get an upgraded spiky ball and so i definitely want to pick up a lot of those well here is the corruption chest so i'm going to put tons of torches all around it just so we can easily see it on our map because we'll definitely want to get the scourge of the corruptor because that can craft into the scourge of the cosmos and that's a melee weapon but it's also a weapon for the rogue class, and I think it's a pretty good one. Oh, excellent. We have a slime, which means we got a key. We've been kind of struggling getting keys this time. We've explored a ton of the dungeon already, but I actually haven't found anything really. I put the spikes on Bane Miner, which is so awesome, because then we can break all these spikes and collect our materials for our spiky ball upgrade. Okay, well, we got the Cobalt Shield. Excellent. So that will eliminate knockback, which will be really good. There we go. We just got a Shadow Key. Excellent. That's like the main thing I need from the dungeon for sure. I think I've already gotten everything else that I need, so it's really just getting the Shinobi Blade now. And here we go, we got the astral chest right here. I think this is another one I'm gonna mark because 
I don't remember exactly what's in the astral chest, but it might be a rogue item. I'll have to look that up. But for sure, it'll be a good one to know where it is. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that really well. And now you can see on the map, it's really clear where the two chests are that we care about. Whoa, we've got two golden chests right beside each other over here. That's pretty sweet. We just got the Shinobi Blade, and I'm pretty excited about it. That was the last thing we needed from the dungeon. And we've been in here for a while, so it'll be nice to head out. I think we've explored pretty much everything in the dungeon. And here's another gold key, so we can open up one more chest. Okay, well, I think it's time to head back to base, and we can do some crafting now for sure. Oh, and we don't even have to craft a DPS meter because our traveling merchant is finally selling one. Sweet, and a stopwatch. We'll grab that too. And another cool thing is we finally have access to treasure bags with this merchant right here. The operator, she sells vanilla boss bags, and she sells the modded treasure bags as well. So that's pretty awesome. We finally unlocked that. And then she also sells stuff like bones and different items from mobs and bosses. And we've got that for modded and for normal. As we progress through the game, this will fill out quite a bit. So one of the things I want to buy right now are two safes. And then I also want to buy a fairy merchant. One of the things that I've been wanting to craft is the metal monstrosity. What that is, is 80 spikes and 500 spiky balls. So it's like a throwing ball that breaks into a bunch of spiky balls. That's actually pretty sweet. And then another thing we can craft is the mobile safe. And this is a Louis AFK thing, and it's so good. It's just two safes, bones, and vile or vicious mushrooms. And so let's craft that. And now we can combine our fairy merchant that I purchased from the merchant, as well as the piggy bank and the safe. And it will craft the mobile pig safe right here. And this is such a great quality of life item. It summons a merchant where you can buy simple things as well as sell stuff. And then you've got your safe and your piggy bank. So it's really helpful. Another thing we can craft is this feather crown and it's an accessory for the rogue class. It increases rogue projectile velocity and it also makes feathers far from the sky when we do stealth strikes. I don't think I'm gonna use it, but it's definitely one that I wanna craft and store because later on we can craft it into some other stuff that make it better and better. And eventually it becomes part of the nanotech recipe. Another cool thing that the merchant sells is the improved dummy. And that's from the Louis AFK mod. And that with our DPS meter will allow us to test our DPS finally. And we can decide which weapons we want to use. So our feather knife is doing like a consistent 150. So the sky stabber can do an insane amount of damage if we land it right on the boss. Now let's see what the turbulence does. So this one actually does more than the throwing knife. That's pretty impressive. It's like 180, even up to 200. And the rot ball can do like 180 to 200 as well. And then we've got the metal monstrosity, which doesn't do much damage on the initial hit, but I think all of these spiky balls that it's shooting all over the place, those will help do a lot of damage. The Shinobi Blade seems to be pretty simple. It doesn't get affected by gravity, and it doesn't seem to be doing that much damage either. It's doing like 90 damage around there, 100. So I may actually put the Shinobi Blade away because it doesn't look like it's really worth using. I just remembered we've got another weapon that we need to craft. Lots of people have told me about it. So let's see if we've got what we need to craft this enchanted axe. There we go. Apparently it's like one of the best weapons at this point in the game. So let's go ahead and see what this does. Whoa. This is pretty sweet. It shoots through the ground. <laughs> well, I just spent a ton of gold on it and now it's rolled to Unreal and let's see what type of damage it can do. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it can do like 450, 470. This is insane. So I could do like 160 if we're really far away, but the real incredible part of this weapon is when you're close. You can do that extra damage from being up close right here. Man, this is pretty cool. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be, I think, my main weapon. 
Now that we crafted an amazing weapon, I think that's a great place to end this episode. We explored so much in the dungeon. I think I pretty much explored everything there is in the dungeon. There might be a little bit up here that I didn't get to, but yeah, we explored the whole dungeon. We got our shadow key so we could head over to the abyss next episode. And we're getting really close to being able to fight the slime god, which is really exciting. So that will probably happen next episode as well. If you're enjoying this series, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.